Hey, welcome to a new video. You hear that cool music, right? Like, it's not just me? Well, that's because today I'm going to be talking about the iPad Air 4. This is my first iPad ever. The iPad Air has quickly turned into one of my favorite entertainment and productivity devices. And dare I say, it's come shockingly close to replacing my MacBook. In almost every aspect, this iPad is almost exactly the same as the iPad Pro. So to me, this makes the iPad Air a much more compelling option than the iPad Pro. So first, let's talk about the design. The iPad Air shares the same beautiful modern design as the iPad Pro. Squared off edges and a flat boxy design reminiscent of the iPhone 4, 5, and 12 series. It's thin, lightweight, and feels great in the hands. Since there's no home button, Touch ID has been integrated into the top power button. An ideal place in my opinion. It works great. It's fast and in a world of masks, it's a pleasure to use. Gestures have a learning curve. Going home, bringing up multitasking, or even bringing up the dock while an app is open, it's gonna take some time to learn. But in the end, it's a much more enjoyable experience. On the back, you'll notice that there is only a single camera. There's no ultra wide, there's no LiDAR. It's a simple, single camera set. These colors are also brand new to the iPad lineup, with Apple bringing in these pastel finishes to the iPad. My favorite color is the sky blue, which is what I picked up. You can also get it in a bunch of other colors and also the classic silver and space gray. Since the iPad Air's design is the exact same as the iPad Pro, this means that it picks up all of the accessories that the iPad Pro supports. And the iPad accessory ecosystem is huge. Most importantly, this means that the Magic Keyboard and the second generation Apple Pencil are compatible with the new iPad Air. One of the best new additions to the iPad Air is the new USB-C port. This means you're only one dongle away from being able to connect a world of accessories to the iPad. This means you can plug in SSDs, hard disks, pen drives, external displays, ethernet cables, or even a dock that supports multiple devices all at once. So this, to everybody, is a welcome change to the iPad Air. The iPad Air also has a brand new speaker setup. Four speaker grills, but there's actually only two speakers. And the A14 works as computational magic, even onto audio. So even the two speaker setup sounds phenomenal. Now let's talk about the display. The display doesn't need any bringing attention to. It's probably one of the biggest changes to the iPad Air alongside the new design. Since the bezels are a little bit thicker, this makes the display size a hair smaller at 10.9 inches instead of the usual 11 inches found on the iPad Pro. You won't notice these thicker bezels unless you put the iPad Pro and the iPad Air side by side. If you're coming from an older iPad or even the last generation iPad Air, you'll enjoy the extra screen real estate. The display is a 60Hz LCD with a P3 Cinema Standard color gamut and it's also capable of displaying HDR with temporal dithering. It gets plenty bright with a peak brightness of 500 nits, so you won't have any problem viewing this even outdoors. Colors look great and the display is crisp with brilliant viewing angles, perfect for reading books, watching movies, and even playing games. I came from a 2020 iPad Pro, which unfortunately I had to return because of some display issues that I had. So I ended up returning it and a while later getting the iPad Air. And honestly, the lack of ProMotion really doesn't bother me. It just took me a few seconds to get used to the 60Hz display it's not a bad thing at all. You would think that this affects the latency of the Apple Pencil 2, but it doesn't do that either. It's perfectly smooth. Now let's talk about performance, productivity, and the Apple Pencil. The A14 inside the iPad Air is nothing short of impressive, even matching that of the iPad Pro, and even beating it in some cases. I mean, it's no wonder that they based the new M1 off the A14 architecture. I don't believe in synthetic benchmarks, but if you're a person of numbers, here are the Geekbench 5 scores. Real world usage-wise, the new iPad Air performs spectacularly. I've thrown so much at it and I just haven't been able to get it to choke. Everything from opening simple apps, multitasking with three windows, and picture-in-picture -picture is smooth and responsive. Even playing games like Oceanhorn perform amazingly, and editing photos in apps like Darkroom, Lightroom, and Snapseed perform great even with large-sized RAW files. I've been using my iPad a lot. I use it to take notes during online class, watch YouTube and Netflix on it, editing photos, designing my YouTube thumbnails, responding to emails and comments on my channel, and sometimes for reading and playing games. And when I'm on my Mac, using Sidecar makes for a seamless wireless dual monitor setup that just works. It's so much fun to use. Now let me get to the Pencil 2. Now I'm not an artist at all, I'm pretty terrible at drawing, but the Apple Pencil has to be my favorite accessory for the iPad. Being able to navigate iPad OS, write into text fields, and treat the iPad like an actual notebook is amazing. Editing photos in need of fine retouching benefit massively from the Pencil, and hopefully having the Pencil will push me to learn how to draw sometime in the near future. Battery life is also excellent with the Pencil. 
The magnetic attachment makes sure that it's always on the iPad and when it's on the iPad, it also charges. This means that it's always at 100% and I've never actually gotten the battery to run past 85%. It's got such stellar battery life. Even latency on the iPad Air isn't a problem at all. Have a look, this is slow motion. It looks pretty good, but to the human eye, you're not gonna notice that kind of a drag effect. It's gonna be almost instantaneous. And that magnetic attachment and charging is miles better than that horrendous setup that the previous iPads used to use. Now let's talk about the camera. A lot of people shy away from talking about the cameras on the iPad. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna tell you all about them. The iPad Air shares the same main camera system as the iPad Pro, but it seems to have better image processing thanks to the A14. There's an option called scene detection, absent from previous generations, and it seems to do a great job. Now, I wouldn't go out and shoot photo and video exclusively on the iPad, but it's great to know that the iPad has a great camera system. The camera works great for a quick snap and clean and crisp document scanning. Here's some samples, have a look. And if you're the person that turns on the camera in class or you need it for meetings, here's the quality of the microphones and the front camera on the iPad. Okay, so pretty great front camera quality and the audio that you're listening to is from the iPad itself. My only issue is that the camera is here and not up here because when you're looking at the screen, it's kind of off-center. Finally, let's talk about battery life. Battery life has been really, really good. I haven't been able to kill it in a day. I've been charging it for almost once in two days, which is pretty impressive. And I average around a four to five hour screen on time every day. And frankly, that's amazing. And the standby time is excellent too and paired with the fast charger in the box, or even the MacBook Pro charger, you can charge this thing really fast. I have no complaints about the battery life. Now, that brings us to the conclusion. Now, you might be thinking whether you should buy the iPad Pro or the iPad Air. Now, there's two different storage options, 64 GB and 256 GB, and frankly, this kind of makes your decision of buying an iPad Air or an iPad Pro a little bit more difficult. If you need only 64 gigabytes, which is the version I opted for, that's great, go for the iPad Air. If you're gonna go for 256, you'll notice that the 120 gigabyte iPad Pro's price is eerily similar to that of the 256 GB iPad Air. And if you think 256 is too much, you might as well go for the iPad Pro with its added benefits like the ProMotion display, slightly better battery life, and Face ID. But that's just my take. Do your research properly before you head in and buy any of these. Now, if you've solidified your decision of buying the iPad Air, just know it's a great choice. It offers so much more than the previous generation and it comes very close to the iPad Pro. If you're a student like I am, you can also pick this up with the student discount. This iPad is a solid option from Apple, and seeing that this is the iPad Air, I'm super excited to see what Apple will do with the iPad Pro. So yeah, that's it for me in this video. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future notifications. Share this video with a friend if you found it helpful and if they're in the same dilemma as you are. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.